but not every reason to say, Hallelujah, did you say? We are come to thank God because of divine health. What again are we come to thank God for? We are going to thank God for divine preservation. And in this time, then, when you have a man who has said, and said, Look, I want to come and pour my heart to you, you have to be ready and open up. Because the more you think you know about God, the more you realize you don't know nothing. Hallelujah. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for your
know how we do it when our favorite football team scores a goal.
before. And I said, this one, as a pastor, my desire was to just do the work of God and get a, you know, a check building for God. So I decided not to get paid. But then, when you made that decision, the battle started coming. We lost three times trying to acquire property. And many pastors who got to that situation, they've given up ministry. Yes, yes. They closed and they just said, we can't continue like this. Yes. They're gone. But God has begun it. And you will do what? He will accomplish it. And when the thing went to court, then we, we said, we need a lawyer. You know, and what happened is that during the COVID, a letter of seven came in and we didn't know. By the time we realized it was too late, so the court had to decide, you have to just, you know, and ignorance is of no excuse. You received a letter, but you didn't go to court. I said, it was coming. So the leaders we come around and said, what do we do about this? We went to see a solicitor and said, look, you still have a case because it was COVID. I will put in a bed to reverse that. And we reverse that and up and down with court. 20,000 already. Now, hey, how much you spend? How about how much? 20,000 just for court fee. For the battle. And sometimes this battle comes, you don't understand. I said, what is this? But I realize that when you face a battle you don't understand, yeah. you need a weapon the enemy don't understand. Yeah. And the enemy don't understand why you are going through the battle, yeah. but you can still rejoice, hallelujah. Yeah. You can still thank the Lord. Yeah. So this afternoon we said, look, whether battle or no battle, we will thank the Lord. Yeah. Because thanksgiving is a weapon. Yeah. It's a weapon and you know, it must motivate you to come and thank the Lord. Sometimes people lost motivation when it comes to thanksgiving. What is the aim for me to go and thank the Lord? No motivation. But when you love the Lord, motivation of thanksgiving is what? Loving God. So the love of God compels you to go and thank Him. And that's why we have come to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You know, in the kingdom of God, everything has motivation. Even our time giving is a motivation. The motivation is that I want to be obedient to God, so I will pay my time. That's the motivation. And when it comes to alms giving, sometimes we give to the poor. If there's no motivation behind you, can't give. The motivation is compassion. You know, so much compassion when you see the poor, something touch you, I have to do something about it. So you are motivated by that. And when you are coming to ministry and God starts to bless you, there's something we call generosity. Yes. Generosity, say generosity. generosity. It's a motivation. Yes. Hallelujah, it's a motivation. And you know, there are giving that when it comes, you need motivation to do that. Hallelujah. Amen. And another giving where you need motivation is see sowing. And that motivation is faith. When you have the faith, you come and say, look, I will sow a seed. Yes. And that one, you can only do it with the motivation of faith. Hallelujah. And I thank God that in this Thanksgiving, God has prepared his own servant. You know, in every you know season, God knows what he's doing. When you look at Pastor Sibio, he has served. Hallelujah. And the reward is in the work in the service. And he didn't serve alone, he served with the work. You can't see a man or a woman who decide that I will serve and God will not bless. Hallelujah. There is a reward. There is a reward in service. People don't understand that there is a great reward. And every true blessing will disguise itself as a problem. When the blessing is coming, you think it's a problem. When you are serving, challenges come and you look at the challenge and say, this is a problem. But it's a blessing in disguise. Say a blessing in disguise. Blessing in disguise. And we thank God that the sinner and pastor decided to come and be a blessing to us. And in this time, when you have a man who has said, and said, look, I want to come and pour my heart to you, you have to be ready and open up. Because the more you think you know about God, the more you realize you don't know nothing. Hallelujah. So you need more from God. Hallelujah. And he came also with a man of God. When I see it's like your twist, look at how you dress. Clap for them, clap for them. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank God for your life. And Pastor Sibiu now is a resident pastor of Trinity Baptist Church. Uh, we thank God for his life and the wife they've been serving. And they want to be a blessing to us. And I want us to stand up and give a cup of it as Pastor Sibiu God bless you. Please be seated. I'm very grateful and privileged for senior pastor, Pastor Winaman, Pastor Gambra, and the leadership inviting about your pastor is that you are in the right place to serve under his apostleship and also his leadership as a senior pastor. Why am I saying that? When Pastor Chris replanted Trinity Baptist Church 37 years ago, God brought his servant, Pastor Winnerman, to be part of those who started the journey with him. He didn't come and he came with his wife, Pastor Emilia. And I remember Pastor Winnerman, when he planted Victory Baptist Church, it was two in here. Through tough times, if you people don't know the history of this church, the number of Retreat he has gone to ask Benham. I don't think there's any Sunday Baptist church that has gone to ask Benham more than Pastor William and Victory Baptist Church. When he started, he was taking people to ask Benham. And about six or seven pastors have come from Victory, but he has not them here. They are all taking care of it in some churches in all over the UK. Please, you have God's grace help together with his wife, Pastor Emilia. And right now I need to tell you that everything started at Tuti. So when I heard God has brought you back to Tuti, I was so excited. Give God a big hand So when God has blessed, bring you to a wedding place. Amen. Let's bow down our head for a short word of prayer. Father, we thank you that through it all, you have brought your servant back to where it all started. We are so grateful to you that today is Thanksgiving Sunday. And Father, as your people have come under his leadership to bring their thanks offering today, bless them. And everybody giving a best thanks offering and a sacrifice to you today. Lord, meet them at the point of their need. Next year by this time, let them come and give a testimony that they have never given. Because this thanksgiving is a special thanksgiving. We give you praise, give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. As I said, I thank our senior pastor, the wife, and the entire leadership. Mr. Michael and all those who have been supporting him. Next year by this time, people will be standing outside. In Jesus' name. Amen. I want to stay with your test that the theme of this thanksgiving is sacrifice of thanksgiving. And let's look at your key text, Psalm 15, verse 14 and 15. Psalm 15, verse 14 and 15, the New King James. It says, Offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and pay your vows to the Most High, and call upon me in the day of trouble. I shall rescue you, and you will honor me. So, a sacrifice of thanksgiving, God is saying, that when we bring it, it's a vow because last year when we met, there were so many things that we told God we want Him to do for us. And we have done it, and today we have come to offer our vows. I'm speaking on the subject a worthy and acceptable sacrifice of thanksgiving. A worthy and acceptable sacrifice of thanksgiving. Since in the Bible, there are, first let me define a sacrifice. What is a sacrifice? An offering you give to a deity or a higher being. In this case, the text says the most high, El Elyon. So it's an offering you give to El Elyon as an act of worship. So today it's not an ordinary thanksgiving you are bringing. You are presenting it as a form of a worship to God. And also thanksgiving is expression of gratitude to God. That's all for this now expression of gratitude. You have come to thank God because you have done something spectacular to your life. And we look at some of the things God has done for you in your life. So we move. Who 
is speaking in this text that says you should offer your sacrifice. The speaker is talking about the mighty God that we serve. The El Shaddai. The God who possess, has a boundless knowledge. Because God's knowledge has no limit, according to Hebrews 4.13. The God who is infinite in wisdom. If God were to look for wicked people on the earth, he would have shown the sun, the moon, and also the stars. Because of his infinite wisdom, all bad people benefit from it. So, when we are giving thanks to God, that is the God we serve. The God who is omnipotent power. His power passes every single power in the surface of this earth. No power comes near him. And that is why I said, your pastor tapped the power, but always taking members to retreat at Ashburn. They go night and daytime. And based on that, when the enemy tries to shake the foundation of this church, God has preserved this church. Let me try the big man of you. So about this sacrifice of thanksgiving, who are those that God wants you to bring a worthy sacrifice of thanksgiving? Those sitting here, who are those? The first, those who fear and love God. Psalm 50 verse 14. So anybody who fears and loves God, when God takes care of you for one year, you have to bring a sacrifice of thanksgiving. That is why we are gathered here. You are not gathered here by accident. Tell somebody you are not here by accident. You are here by divine design. God wants you to come and give a sacrifice of thanksgiving. That's why you are here. Who are those who should give sacrifice of thanksgiving? It's those who are subjects of trials. The verse 15 says that God will rescue you like the way he rescued his church from the testimony pastor gave. Forget about how much of money spent. God himself will bring it through his own diverse means. The mighty name of Jesus. Trials. We go through trials every day. But God Himself, when people want to shake the foundation of a child that has a witness in heaven, they are just wasting their time. Because God has a testimony over Pastor Gabriel and the church, as a man in his church. That is why He has brought us back to duty. Let's look at biblical examples of unacceptable offering. Because when you are bringing a sacrifice, you don't bring it anyhow. Our church, we have a principle, I always tell them every year you have to give more than what you gave the previous year. And I will explain to you. And when I come for Thanksgiving, I used to tell our church members that for a security guard to guide you, you hire a security guard to guide you every day you sleep. It's more than 20 pounds per hour. That's a screen that is waiting for us. And I always tell our church members. That if you cannot give any thanksgiving, can you give God one pound a day? That's 365 pounds a year. But we can't pay God. But thanksgiving, I will explain to you why you have to give your best offering. So Cain's offering was unacceptable. Genesis chapter 4, 4 and 5. Cain and Abel offered an offering. Abel brought the fat of their lamb. Go to the next slide. Cain brought something, fruit of the land that was not well recognized. So, in the end, God refused Cain's offering. So, there are some sacrifice of times in which it's not acceptable before God. You don't just give anyhow. No. You prepare and you bring your best to the Lord because He's going to use that to take care of you the year ahead. Your children, the mama of school, they are gone. They take buses. People should not take buses. They don't come home. So you give a sacrifice. So the first person in the Bible who sacrificed for his priest was sin. God didn't accept it. Also in the New Testament, Ananias and Sapphira, unacceptable sacrifice. Acts chapter 5, 3 to 4 and 9. They saw their land. They made a vow. That this land that we are sold, we'll go and give to God. And when the husband came first, he pocketed the amount to show you. He pocketed majority of the amount. And he came and filled with one of Peter said, Ananias, why should you lie to God?
all. Is it all that you saw the other person? Say yes. Then Holy Ghost strike him. Peter pronounced the way. And he was taken for the burial. The wife also came in because they connect together. But when the wife went up many times, he didn't give the best offer. The father also came. She also lied. And she was also slain. So all the seven came often was refused. New Testament, Ananias and Sapphira, their offering were refused. Let's look at Bible examples of those whose offering were accepted. Don't forget that I keep on using the word best. You can't give anything gradual to the Lord. No, it should be your best. Something that will cost you. The first person that my mind went on is King Solomon. After he burned the church and he was sacrificing because they attained the new burnt offering. The Bible says he is the only person who has given more than anybody during the dedication of the temple. When you go to 1 Kings 8, 63, Solomon gave so much, thousand rounds, sheep, over 3,000. She gave that, people said one man each, he gave this in thousands. And the Bible says, God descended like a smoke. And the priest, the pastors could not stand. Because the offering touched God's heart. So through the temple dedication, God Himself appeared. Today I'm here to tell you that if you give your best, God will appear to your home in the mighty name of Jesus. Every disaster in your Then there is another woman, the woman with the alabaster boss. When Jesus was about to prepare for his burial, John chapter 12, verse 3. The woman brought the most expensive perfume. You know that those days, it's like these days, if you go to Africa and some parts of the world, there is big, big perfume. Mothers and grandmothers keep it and nobody touches it. It's for display. It's expensive. <laughs> so that one, once in a year, Easter, they will spray some of them. Say, Christmas, they will spray. You don't touch it. No child go near that perfume. <laughs> it's their life saving. So this woman, Mary, Bought an expensive perfume, her life saving perfume, and she used it to anoint Jesus' feet. And Jesus recognized it. And Judas, who was the one who kept the treasure, he said, Lord, why should she waste such an expensive to rob you? He didn't know that the woman was prepared for Jesus' burial. But Jesus said, Why about the gospel who will be preached? The name will be mentioned. Saints, if you give something best to God today, God will recognize it. God will recognize it. Now, let's move to my main part of my message. What is the reasons why we are... What are the reasons why we have to bring our sacrifice of times giving? First reason. We are bringing our sacrifice of times giving because of divine provisions. Divine provisions. Everybody sitting here, you eat three square meals a day. There are some people in the world today, go to Gaza. Some people in the world today, war have ransacked them, they don't have any food to eat. If somebody gives them just a muscle of sandwich, it's okay for the day. But you and I, we eat and we throw some into the meal. Lift your right and say, Lord, I thank you for your blessings. You are blessed. So divine provisions. What is the divine provisions I'm talking about? As I was 23, 25, and 26. 25 says, if you serve me, all those playing the instrument, all the victory choir singing, all the ushers, everybody who have attended church regularly, all the leaders. God said, if you serve me, what is it that he will do for you? Divine help. He said that if you serve him, he will give you, take every snack. And also, you have a good share of the good things of the, this life. God said, You will nourish your body. He yes. will give you food and drink yes. if you serve Him. So, it's divine provision. You are here because every part of your body is functioning normally because you eat well. You decide which food you eat. Some people don't have that choice. So, we are coming. Because of God nourishing. Second reason why we are coming 
to bring a great sacrifice of time giving today is divine health. Ezra 23, 25b. He says that if you serve me, I will take sickness out of your home. So God will give you sound mind and healthy body. You will take sickness out of your home. Look at COVID. The number of people who COVID took their life, millions. But here you are sitting here today. Some of you just are positive, but God preserve you. Just are positive. Some of you are even maybe in the hospital. But still, God has given you divine health. So the first reason is divine provisions. Second reason, divine health. If you are, you are here, your liver is functioning normally. You are here, your heart is functioning normally. You have every reason to say, Hallelujah, be to his name. So we are come to thank God because of his divine provisions. We are come to thank God because of divine health. What again are we come to thank God for? We are going to thank God for divine preservation. Divine preservation. What do I mean by divine preservation? When you sleep and you wake up, Psalm 121 verse 7 says, I will preserve your going out and your coming in. Every day when you get up and you walk out of your house, God's angels are surrounding you. Don't see them. You go to work, the underground. You take the public transport, the bus. And immediately, because you have come to church, and you have received prayer from God's servant, everywhere you go, God's church light is on you. And you preserve your going out and your coming. Because God, 24 7, He never sleep nor slumber. Your children go to school, only God knows. The classroom that they are, the number of people who are there. Not everybody is right. Some possess demonic forces. He are sitting there. But God preserve your children. Because anywhere they go, the angel of God surrounds them. So with the third reason is that because of divine provision, he preserved, because of preservation, he preserved us, our going out and coming in. The fourth reason we are bringing thanksgiving is divine detours. For another word for detours, divine turn around. Since we always move in wrong direction. But God, who says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know the plans that I have for you. I know the thoughts that I have for you. Thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring you to an expected end. And Psalm 37, verse 23 says, The steps of the godly are directed by God. Tell somebody on left or right, you are not here by accident. You are here by divine hand. Never think that you are here by accident. So when you are moving in the wrong direction, wrong job, I used to tell most of our young people when they go to interview and they don't get the job, I say, because God has a better job for you. It is your divine detour. Keep on sending more series, and most of them get better jobs than the previous one. So there are some people divine detour. If you're moving in the wrong direction, God has to turn you around and put you on the right direction. Yes. Divine detour. Because Proverbs 19, verse 21, he said, a man plans his way. By the counsel of God is the one that will stand. Yes. Don't forget that scripture. So every time you are making any decision, bring it before God. I have a man some years back when we were at the old site. He saw that everybody is shipping used ties, lorry ties to Africa. So he also went to take a loan, 50,000 pounds. He didn't pray. He didn't know the background he's coming from. He has not been going to the retreat because we don't know how to go in. He didn't know his family home. He went to order ties from Germany or Belgium, some part of Europe. His ship ended up in South Africa instead of Tampa. It delayed six months. Life is war. By the time his ship came back, the ties have been covered the whole nation, so he couldn't sell it for more than. 50% the price, and he ran at a loss. Since if you are making one decision, God loves you, you will be divine it all. Amen. And when you are making a decision, and God said no, I love God to put you on his own path. Amen? Amen? So first reason, as I said, is divine provision. Second reason, divine health. That's why we are bringing things. Because every organ in your body is functioning normally. It takes you to visit a hospital. 
So people have to be fed. You, you eat, and you are able to even use toothpick to remove something. <laughs> Then divine preservation, third reason. Fourth reason, divine detours. Fifth reason, divine upliftment. That's a secure job. Because God has uplifted you compared to last year. Your standard of living this year is better than last year. Divine upliftment. I love what David says in Psalm 3, verse 3. He said, You are the lifter of my head. When the enemy does everything that we say, but you, O oh Lord, are assured around me, my glory and the lifter of my head. Thanks. So you are here today because God lifted your head. Yeah. All the demonic arrows that were fired at you from your mother's household, from your father's household, they threw the arrows, but God lifted your head above where the arrows were coming. Yeah. So that is why we are come to give him thanks, because your life has been uplifted. Other than that, who knows? You could have been made redundant. You could have lost your job. In this country, when you lose your job, how are you going to meet your bills? But God uplifted you. Your life is better than some people somewhere. Because you have hooked on to the message God has given to his servants here. So, the fifth reason is divine upliftment. God uplifted you. Your life this year is better than last year. Because Christianity is a progressive faith. You always move on in life. And it's God who has made it possible. The sixth and last reason why we are bringing thanks today is Acts 433. It's because of great grace. Great grace. Look at the a testimony Pastor they share. If it were not grace, by now you will be doing Zoom. There's no place for you to meet. But because of great grace, God made this place possible for you. As for church, they said that the apostles, they manifested through the resurrection of Jesus Christ because great grace was upon them. God's great grace is why we are here today. Because so many people are not in a better position than who you are now. There are so many countries, there are walks. They don't have a shelter, a place, a roof for their life. They don't have food to eat. They don't have clothes to wear. But great grace has kept you. Because Jesus paid the price he has in mind. Tell you, Jesus has in mind. Everything was by grace. Everything was by grace. So based on this, we are coming to bring our thanks offering today. The great King George the Third. Of England. During the Revolutionary War, when they fought with America, he lost so many soldiers. Thousands of soldiers were killed. He lost 30 colonies. In spite of all, when the war ended, he called his chaplain. Because those days, chaplains were those who advised kings, always where they are, pastors are there as chaplains. He called his great chapel and said, I'm declaring one day of thanksgiving for the whole of United Kingdom. After the war, he lost so many people. Then the chaplain asked him, Kingdom, why are you giving a day of thanksgiving to God, United Kingdom, when you have lost 30 colonies? You know that before you get to the chapel, he says, matters will have been lost. Mm. He was talking about great things. He said, our situation will have been worse. So far as God has kept some of our remnant, it's good enough. Tell to somebody your situation could have been worse. So we are come to give thanks offering because of God's great grace. In conclusion, how do you respond to this year's thanks offering? How do you respond to this year's thanks offering? David said, I will not give to God what will not cost me. The widow's man, people keep on saying widow's man, the woman, all that he had was two kinds. You know, I love that scripture because it's the only scripture Jesus went to stand at the church and watch how people gave. Some who are, have millions will come and put him there thousand. People will be like, ah. Jesus said, look at what you, what you are giving is peanuts from what you have. But the woman came and gave two widow's man, a widow, all her life savings. And Jesus said, this woman has given a best offering. So today, when you are come to bring your offering, the first thing I 
want you to respond to this message, a ready and acceptable sacrifice of time, you give your best. Give more than what you gave last year. Don't repeat yourself. Christianity is a progressive life. What you gave last year, add more to what you gave last year. So you give your best. Second thing I want you to note is that you give as a form of worship. The ten lepers, the one who came, he lay at Jesus' feet as a form of worship. Mary, when she gave that expensive perfume, he brought Jesus' feet with the, her hair to clean the oil. So, second thing I want you to do after giving your best, give willingly. Let it be from a cheerful heart. And today, as you are giving, your life will never be the same. May God encourage you to give your best and give from a cheerful heart. This be us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
offering, your sacrifice offering. Throughout the day, what the Lord has worked for you. But before we do that, there's another offering. I have you seen that you sometimes, you know, God says, I love what? I love what? A cheerful giver. So just begin to give a smile offering to God.
dance offering and the seed offering and all the offerings, we decided to bring a cameraman. He was come all the way to be a blessing to us. Come for him. It's not well, they go to the shepherd. But when the shepherd is bleeding, what, where does he go? You know, and I believe that when pastors are going through, the only thing they can draw strength from is our pastor. So my wife is my pastor. Come from this one. Hallelujah. He's been a good pastor, a good pastor. And we thank God for your life. Hallelujah. The company is so small. And also, what is so much? You know, whether they like you or not, they have to be here. Sometimes they have their thing, but they still make time. They have, they have no excuse. So let's go for them. Always be in And also, you know, when we look around, we've all been good. I mean, if you see how the organization and everything. They put that uh, body body. The, there was a team, plenty team, and we want to thank God for their life. We yeah. yeah. thank all of you, Hallelujah. Yeah. And we thank the women fellowship leader. Give a big clap of praise for her, Hallelujah. And the men fellowship, give a clap for him, Hallelujah. The worship team, I mean. It's not only the pulpit and the table and the altar. The amount I tell you, we need somebody who can do the administration. So we want to thank God for that. And hallelujah. And for this, we never be blessed to the excellence with the charity commission and everything. And when you look at it, you also need a good accountant. And the Yannick and the wife, they are being accountants. Partner with. And before I hand over the mic, you know, we cannot go far if you don't have people with good heart around you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes, I mean, I was in Ghana, and when they heard the good news how Pastor Michael and the wife has been pastoring, you know, even when I was away, we want to do the big of Pastor Michael and the wife. Hallelujah. You know, on the on the 15th, the LDA lost, they came in to support, but the vision is that you know uh, the parties you know will find him a place and we are praying about that. And one of the requirements is that he has to be ordained. Without that, you know, it will be difficult to find him. The nation is coming on, on the uh, 15th of December. So pray for him. Hallelujah. 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 God is good. And all the time. And also we have some visitors came. Come for the visitors as well. And Tiama, you know, they've been cleaning this place. And uh, my dear Auntie Sarah. I mean, so mommy used to be always cleaning after church. Since they joined the church, they said, no, we won't allow some mommy to be part of the cleaning team. They took her off and they took it over. You know, they done so much. And, you know, they decided to put all this white tape up over their chairs. I mean, and when it's dirty, they go and wash it and bring it back. What a service. Let's give it a cup of it. And they don't charge us for it. You know, they may check the pay, but here they never charge for it. And they do it with the children. Come for them, 
Hallelujah. I've seen time to be taken at the children and talking to them. Hallelujah. We give God glory for what He's doing. And also, the youth, they decided that we will not let the change go forward if we are not part of it. So the youth decided that they will be meeting every Wednesday. And then, I mean, it's amazing how they've taken the maximum and the youth are coming in their numbers, you know, having their own session. I heard that they want to, you know, choose their own president. I said, hey, you, if they want their own president, they, all the department is filled. So, next year will be awesome, hallelujah. And that's been our prayer to have a new pastor. Let's pray that as the youth takes over. You know, when you are growing old, I, I mean, as, this year is about 25 years of passion, 25 years. Next year will be 25 years. And it has to be, it's, it's like yesterday. It's like yesterday, we started 2000. So, to, um, 2025 will be, will be what? 25 years. And we started very young, you know. So when you start ministry, there is so much zeal without what knowledge. So you get tired because the zeal is so what is moving you. But when you are going, you slow down. So I'm slowing down now. Hallelujah. And I'm praying that the youth will take over. Hallelujah. And I believe that he you know, has been a blessing. We started with nothing, but when you serve God, God Himself blesses you. I've never, we don't take salary, but God find a way to give us a company that will be a blessing to us. Hallelujah. And isn't God wonderful that you serve him, you open so many doors. And that has been the driving force of us. Because the more we serve, the more God opens doors and the more God provides. And it blows our mind what the Lord does when we see. So, you know, I have no excuse. And we have no excuse. And my children, they are seeing it. And they are tapping into that. They realize that, you know, the reward is in the service. And when you serve, God always rewards. And my prayer is that, maybe, even when I'm not here, catch the vision of serving. Because there will always going to be a reward following in your service. We thank God in your life. You know, for service, I mean, this church, we are not massive, but the kind of things you do, it blows my mind sometimes. Thank you. 
let us pray for him. Father, your word says that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. When the righteous run into it, we are saved. Father, the Bible says that he that dwells in the sacred place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of Almighty. He says, one who walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we shall not fear evil, because we are our rock and our stars. The Lord says that goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our lives. Father, did you say that, Lord, you will be above, not underneath. Father, you always say that you are a covenant-keeping God. God that you have called us is faithful. Faithful is your name. We pray the Lord. Your ways are not just a name. Father, we pray the Lord. Whatever you have said concerning his life, Lord, we pray that it will come to pass. Because your ways are yes and amen. You are not a man that you should lie. Whatever you have said concerning a life, concerning his life will come to pass. Father, it will be a blessing over what unto his family. Father, you will grow up to be a man that you want him to be. Father, we thank you for your protection. We pray for your divine protection, divine covering. Father, divine guidance and the divine advice and upliftment in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise. Father, this afternoon your word has come to us all this. To lift us to where, Lord, you want us to be. Father, we pray that, Lord, being obedient to your word, you will lift us into our glory. We pray that, Lord Jesus, protect and preserve us, Lord. Father, your word says that he that dwell in the second place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Father, we thank you. He says, no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper. Any tongue that will rise up against us shall be condemned. Father, contend to those who contend with us and find those who fight us. Father, the Bible says, for our weapons of our warfare is not carnal, but is mighty through Christ for the pulling down of every stronghold. We any argument, anything that exalts himself against the knowledge of God, this afternoon we bring it down under the obedience of Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I will be the head, not the tail. We pray the Lord. Your blessings will be overflowing of our lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. The Lord shine his face upon you. Amen. And the Lord be gracious unto thee. Amen. The Lord turn towards you Amen. and give you peace. Lord, let's share the grace together. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, <laughs> and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Now anoint our hands with oil, our cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.